to the parasha. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you right now, Lord. We lift you up. It is such a privilege, Lord, to open your word, to study it, to dig down deeper into your word, to see if there's a, a deeper meaning to all that we can read here, so that, in fact, when you put people on our path, if you do consistently, okay, and help us to recognize that. Give us the discernment, Lord, to know exactly what you're doing and, and to uh, not hold back when there are people that are put there in our path we need because our time is here is very short and your presence in that person's life could be a tiny thread and the difference between them and eternity. So we just praise you and thank you for the opportunities that you give us. Equip us, Lord. That's what this is all about. Equipping us. So we praise you and we thank you. Be with us as we open your word. We ask right now, Lord, that the Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, pour into us and equip us and just move within us within the conversation and the words of the Lord that you have provided with us this morning, for us this morning. We praise you and we thank you. We ask for your blessings on the service to come at 1030, on the rabbi as he brings you word, on the praise and worship on everything that we do, because all of it is as unto you. So we praise you and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Yeshua the Messiah. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, interesting. Uh, so people coming in here. One second. Okay. Technical challenges here. Okay. So um, interesting book that uh, we were provided with last uh, couple of weeks and I, don't, I forget the name of the author but the book uh, is called uh, studying the bible with rabbi jesus is that was no studying the studying the bible with studying rabbi. the bible with rabbi jesus no it didn't say jesus i think it does no but be that as it may the person who wrote the book At the beginning of the book presents a really interesting perspective on um, putting yourself not in the Western place where we are. We're sitting here kind of in the lap of luxury. I can't help but think about Abraham when the Lord moved on him to move out of the land of Ur and go out into this totally strange, uninhabited place. It took him, he was living in the lap of luxury for all intents and purposes sitting back in his recliner. Well, everything was wonderful, okay? And took him completely out of that comfortable position into what was not comfortable at all. So um, it's interesting that he should suggest, the author, or I think it's a she actually, right? Uh -huh. uh, should suggest that we look at the Bible from the perspective of the time in which it was written. Okay, how many of you have been to Israel? Okay. All right. If you haven't, the first opportunity that you can ever possibly get and make, we highly encourage you to do that because it changes the perspective of everything. Right, Jeff and Julia? Okay. No doubt. No doubt. It changes you are, the way you unexpect, that's for sure. Yeah. Say that again, Jeff. It, cha it changes you in a way you would truly unexpect it to be. Yeah, it, it really defies description. But being there and feeling the flavor of everything, in other words, we read this these words from our modern day perspective. But we really try to insert ourselves into that time and place to have a deeper understanding and an emotion about what it was that we're trying to convey to us. Diane. Who's the author of that book? I'll give it to you later. You... Okay. Yeah. Really interesting perspective. Susan, Susan's the book maven. Okay. So um, literally in my house, you have to go sideways around the piles of books. Okay. Uh, hang on, Jamaica is joining us. 
Okay, so again, understanding the perspective and we're still at the point now in this parasha where the Lord over this long period of time is taking the Egypt out of the Israelites, right? He is pouring into them a whole new perspective on everything, on what life should be like. And that's what the entire word of God is from Genesis to Revelation. It is a complete perspective. It's a book of instruction. They say that the Torah is the book of instruction, but at the same time, it is the entire word of God from beginning to end. And so um, the things that the Israelites are hearing now are things, words that were never ever spoken before, ever. And so um, the Lord is pouring into them. And for all intents and purposes, he's pouring into us right now. Amen? Amen. For what purpose? For the same purpose it was back then. We're surrounded by the world, but we are not of this world. If you have this relationship with a living, loving God, then you're not of this world, okay? We are functioning on a completely different plane. You know where you're going, and there's a lot of other people that need to know where they're going and are going to depend on you. Amen? So let's look at Shemini. Again, Leviticus chapter 9. And who would like to share with us what Shemini means? Anybody? Eight. Eight. So says Rebbets and Linda, eight, eight. And so um, Leviticus 9.1. Okay, would anybody like to read? Keep this in mind. Good morning, John. Okay, eight. Uh, the older Moses, uh, all by appointment, um, the array of sacrifices for the people, that's what this is about, okay, and the beginning of the Kohanim uh, and their ministry, okay, the, the priests, okay, nine, you look okay. nice and long. Okay, now it happened on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron, his sons, and the elders of Israel. Then he said to Aaron, take a calf from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and offer them before Adonai. You are to speak to B'nai Israel, saying, take a male goat for a sin offering, along with a calf and a lamb, both yearlings, without blemish for a burnt offering, plus a bull and a ram for fellowship offerings, to sacrifice before Adonai, along with a grain offering mixed with oil. For today, Adonai appears to you. Wow, today. Adonai appears to you, Miss Sunny. I just thought of something very interesting. Maybe it's not apropos at all, but it's interesting that it's on the eighth day. Yeah. And that's the same day of circumcision of the Hebrew, the Hebrew boys. And it's almost like there's a thing of sanctification in there. But well, it's, it's like another a circumcision of the heart, circumcision of our lives. Since you brought it up, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the eighth day, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, last week when we studied, not last week, but prior to mm -hmm. Passover. So we want to praise God for the Passover. We had a wonderful Passover. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we read, uh, pre-Passover, we read Sav, the parasha called Sav, where the Lord instructed Moses to command Aaron and his sons to prepare for their duties in the Mishkan. And uh, talking about all the sacrifices, carbono, the sacrifices to the Lord. And what they were doing was essentially getting ready to welcome the Lord to the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you were being visited by a special dignitary, would you go through some preparation? Oh, praise God. Right? Yeah. If somebody was of some importance mm -hmm. coming to your home, you think you might tidy up a little bit. Yeah. Now, Rabbi, if, you, if you came to my home, I'd have to tidy up and do everything because you're, you're the Aaron in that case. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, for seven days, Aaron and his son stayed in the tent of meeting 
as part of that whole ordination process. And on the eighth day, Moses called them to begin presenting the offerings, the Korbano, to the Lord. And uh, Leviticus 9, 6, let's look at that for a second. We just did. Okay, not quite. We're not quite there. But 9, 6, if you jump ahead, the bottom of uh, 104, if you're in the TLV, Moses said, what? This is what Adonai commanded that you should do so that the glory of Adonai may appear to you. Okay, so again, the Lord is pouring into Moses. Okay, he is the one who is communicating what the Lord says to the people of Israel. Amen? Amen. The whole process here took seven days to prepare correctly for what was about to happen to the priests to ready themselves for this complete holy function. So we know that number seven is rather uh, important to us scripturally. What is seven? Perfection. Perfection. And eight mm -hmm. is no beginning. Completion. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody's got it. All right. So just as Paul said, the number eight represents new beginnings, new beginnings. So on the seventh day, what happened? God rested, yes, and he blessed yeah. it with his creation, declaring it as set apart. Okay, he declared a holy day of rest. Here we sit, amen. Shabbat. Right. Thank you. And on the eighth day, however, work resumed once more. Uh, and at this particular time, um, humans began their stewardship, if you will, of God's creation by tending and caring for the garden. That's what happened in the beginning. In the beginning. On the eighth day, therefore, is a kind of type of anniversary, if you will, of creation. Oh. Mm. Mm. Diane. Is the eighth day, is that a... Uh... Jewish holiday called Shemini Atzeret. Shemini Atzeret. And, and we celebrate that. That's that's you know, aligns itself with Simcha Torah. So, what are they celebrating? Adam and Eve starting to tend celebrating the, the Word of God. That's the time when we parade Torah around the synagogue here. Shemini Atzeret. We celebrate that in conjunction. With Simcha Torah. Does it commemorate a certain event? The giving of the law of the Torah, okay. which was actually um, uh, uh, Shavuot. Shavuot commemorates the actual giving of the Torah, giving of the law uh, from Zion, but it has also come down to mean something else that was given. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pentecost. So the corresponding messianic event is Pentecost. Yep. Same day. To Shemini yeah, Atzeret. Same day, not same year, same day. And okay. that corresponds to Shemini Atzeret? Yes. Okay. Question. Isn't it interesting, too, that this part is called Shemini, and the first is Hashem, the name of God appears in on the eighth day, too? It's sort of an interesting story. So lots of things about eight, okay? The eighth day, therefore, is, like I said, an anniversary of creation. Uh, the eighth day is considered to be a day of, of covenant, okay? And we know covenant as the word brit, as in brit hadasha, mm -hmm. right? The new covenant, all right? Um, I think that's so interesting, just to reiterate about the uh, eighth day being the beginning of Adam and Eve's work, that here on the eighth day of consecrating the priesthood and, and the sacrifices, getting that all started, the priests then began to do the work for the people. Precisely. That's really okay. It was the day that they get everything got done, and it was about to. Now we need to get down to business. Yeah. And do the, the Lord's work. Rabbi, uh, can you? Yes. Can you answer or, or explain? Is first fruits on the eighth day as well? That is Shavuot. That's the beginning. Well, first right? fruits is Bikurim. Bikurim, yes. Yeah. And who was the first fruit? Yeshua. 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 
Yeshua. Amen. <coughs> Yeshua. Okay. So uh, again, I, I have a question to, well, a comment, I guess. Yes, um, all right, let me. The day after Sukkot is is a holiday that has Shemini, Shemini in it. Um, and it's like a day of praising. Right, well, any, there are lots of times when we celebrate what we celebrate, i.e. Passover, okay, which is a seven day feast festival. Okay, it's, it's Passover and it's the festival of Matzah. Okay, and um, but on the eighth day again, we get down to business and begin to do the Lord's work. Okay, so it's also, as Sonny mentioned, the day that every Jewish male infant is brought into the covenant with Almighty God through the rite of circumcision, or it's called Brit Milah. Brit Milah. <clears throat> David, familiar name? David uh, was the eighth son of Jesse and Israel's first great king, from whom the lineage of Hamoshiach, the Messiah, would come. <clears throat> uh, the eighth day, the first day of the week, essentially, right? Yeshua rose from the grave and became Bikurim, mm -hmm. the first fruits. And for all those who would be resurrected on the last day. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what that's about. Other occurrences of, of eight include, uh, uh, there were eight spices of incense, as well as the Kohen Agadol, the high priest, eight articles of clothing. Okay, lots of eights. Often the week-long festivals of Passover, Sukkot, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, are given an additional eighth day of celebration, such as Acharon Shel Pesach, the final day of Passover, is on the eighth day. The Shemini Atzeret, as we talked about, eighth day of an assembly of Sukkot. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and coming into active service in the Mishkan, on the eighth day was not only an indication of new beginnings, it was also, you know, the, the new beginning of this parasha. So the consecration of Aaron and his sons, as well as the desert tabernacle, took exactly one year after the exodus from Egypt in Nisan for the first month. And Nisan is the beginning of spring, when the rainy season comes and to an end, and the first uh, Fruit trees begin to blossom, and the fields are carpeted with wildflowers. On the eighth day, the preparations for God's glorious entry into the Mishkan. Again, all of these things were done in preparation for this event. Okay, so they were preparing for his final ascension, descension into um, the tabernacle, the Shekinah glory, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, describe how. What is the Shekinah glory? They've been following it in the desert. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. cloud. The what? The cloud. The cloud by day. Okay. The, fire. Fire. the pillar of fire by night. Okay. Entry into the tabernacle over Aaron and his sons began their priestly ministry at that time. This is where Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Ring a bell? What happened to them? Yeah, they made a big mistake. They made a big mistake. Okay, they made their own concoction of incense, if you recall. Okay, they, and they put it on their censers. They put fire in them and added incense, and they offered strange fire, zara, before the Lord, contrary to His command. They didn't do this for any of God's instructions. Okay, so fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Do you think they meant anything bad by doing that or they were just so excited? Well, clearly the suggestion as you read on is they were not in a normal state. They were in mm -hmm. And I'm thinking too, they had a bit of pride because they brought their own thing that they thought would be good mm -hmm. into the helping God. The, the, even the recipe for the incense was very specific, but they created their own. Mm -hmm. All right. But the Lord said, uh uh, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. 
So, and that is an incredible, amazing moment that we'll read about here. Okay, uh, specifically, it is one of the most, to me, tension-filled moments where Aaron and Moses see this happening. And Aaron has to remain stoic. We'll read this in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, he cannot display what he's feeling at that particular time. We'll read. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okay, but um, at that time, it was great grief. Aaron had to remain, as I said, quiet, expressionless. At a time of great grief, Aaron remained silent rather than speak out in any kind of angry uh, accusation against God. Do you think you could have done that? No, he wasn't allowed to mourn. He's not allowed to mourn. When we go through these painful trials, and they happen in life, Mm -hmm. um, the things happen and strike unexpectedly. Could be illness, could be an accident, could be death. Uh, One of the best initial strategies may be to keep your mouth closed, even until we have control over what we're about to say. It's kind of like Job, after he had the tragedies, he worshiped God. Mm -hmm. It's it's that kind of... Job is incredibly powerful. And again, it's majorly consensus is that Job um, was the first book that was written. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God wants a sacrifice of praise, and that's when it happens. When yeah. you praise him, no matter what you're Too often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, so in Proverbs so 17, 28, Solomon, in all his wisdom, penned the verse. He said, even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. Mm-hmm. When he closes his lips, he is considered prudent. And just a few later uh, verses later, God tells Aaron, he said, you and your sons are not to drink wine or other fermented drink when you go into the tent of meeting or you will die. So clearly the suggestion is that's not what Adab and Abihu were doing. Okay, this is a lasting ordinance for generations to come. And just to kind of make a, a quick analogy there, alcohol can dull one census. Really? (laughs) <laughs> uh, and prevent a person from distinguishing between right and wrong. You think? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can drive. Oh, no problem. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, it has a, could you know make a decision between what is clean and what is unclean. But of the specified functions of the priesthood, that would be rather important. That be of right mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. Just as it is unwise to drink and drive, as we said. It can be equally dangerous in a spiritual sense to drink and serve the Lord. In any event, it is evident that these sons of Aaron were careless in the face of God's holiness. But God is equally just and holy. And for this reason, he is called a consuming fire. Wow. Throughout the whole Tanakh. And what is meant by the Tanakh? Specifically, I'm trying to remember the Hebrew words. The the Torah, the priest, the Ketuvim, and the the, the, the Torah. It's the Old Testament. (laughs) It is the Old Testament. And the Torah, yeah. From Genesis to Malachi. To Malachi. It's Tanakh, right. And Tanakh is an acronym. As you said, okay, it is Torah, Navim, and Ketuvim, okay, and the three sections of that. So the whole idea is that God is equally just and can call, call this consuming fire, but the whole idea is that we should walk in a healthy fear of God, uh, which would keep us on the narrow path that leads ultimately to life with Him. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 So again, Proverbs 19. Um, Rabbi, uh, yes. Um, when you said you cannot drink and serve the Lord, it reminded me of something that used to happen in the Catholic 
church um, a long time ago, where some of the priests and the, you know, those priests and I don't know who else used to drink quite a bit of, of wine that they were supposed to be using for no. communion. No. You're kidding. <laughs> I'm sure it's not just in the movies. <laughs> it did happen. Something so maybe they didn't right, know Evangel. that part. Okay. But they were not allowed to do other things either. Okay. And so they took it out somewhere else. Anyway, <laughs> the pro Proverbs 9.10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was the this week's little uh, kind of summary of this. But now let's go look at the details. Can I have one thought here on verse 6? Yes. Uh, it says, this is what Adonai commanded you shall do, so that the glory of Adonai may be, appear to you. And I think that's so wonderful because that's after they had the, um, the offerings for the children of Israel. Yep. And so God's glory is going to appear to the, all the people. And from last week's parasha, God defined his glory in Exodus 33 of goodness and long suffering and all these wonderful things that when we follow his commands, that's what we show to the world. Yeah. So it's really cool. He's going to show him his glory and he'll get it. Hopefully they'll get it. <laughs> Some will get it. Help us get it, Lord. <laughs> How many have had an experience where you've tried to share your faith with somebody? Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hope all of you have your hands up. Uh, okay. okay. And sometimes it's received and sometimes it ain't. Okay. I can say that. I used to teach English. All right. Mm -hmm. um, but the seed has been planted. But the seed has been planted. Exactly right. I was okay. going to say mm -hmm. some plant, some water, but the Lord gives the increase. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. The mere fact that you did that is a blessing, that you shared your faith, and that you did what you could do. Uh, and again, the rest, the Lord, uh, you can nurture it and water it and do all that you need to do, but He's in control. Amen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, again, part of that is not just you verbally sharing your faith with somebody. Mm -hmm but it's the whole way you exist. Mm -hmm. Because if you have proclaimed the fact that you are a follower of Yeshua the Messiah, that people are looking at you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jesus freak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So they're watching you and they're trying to see where you mess up. Do we mess up? Never. <laughs> okay, it is possible. You, you know, again, what comes out of your mouth? The Lord says, "Is more, I'm much more concerned about what comes out of your mouth than what goes in your mouth." Mm -hmm. That's what He said. Okay, mm -hmm. it, He didn't change the laws that we're about to read about. Let's read about. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's pick it up five. from uh, where are we? Five nine five. Uh, nine five. Pick it up from nine five. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So they brought what Moses commanded before the tent of meeting, and the entire congregation drew near and stood before Adonai. Moses said, This is what Adonai commanded that you should do, so that the glory of Adonai may appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar and bring your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Then present the offering for the people and make atonement for them as Adonai commanded. Okay, so here it is. They're going to work. Okay, they were not ordained to be idle. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, I'm a priest. Mm -hmm. Okay, to rest or simply, you know, congregate, but get busy. It was a full time job. Jump with me over to Ezekiel 43. Ezekiel 43, 26, 27. I just don't know your mind margin there for that. Ezekiel 43, 26, and 27. First one there. Who'd like to read it? Nice and loud. 
43, got it. 26 and 27? Yes, sir. <clears throat> They will make an atonement for the altar and cleanse it for seven days. This is how they will consecrate it. When they have completed the days from the eighth day and onward, the Kohamin will make your burnt offering upon the altar as well as your fellowship offering. Then I will accept you. It is a declaration of Adonai. Amen. Okay, Amen. just a further extension of what we're reading here. Okay, let's pick it up at eight. Okay, so we're at eight. So Aaron drew near to the altar and slaughtered the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him. Then he dipped his finger in the blood, dabbed it onto the horns of the altar, and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat, the hip kidneys, and the cover from the liver of the sin offering, he burned up as smoke on the altar, as Adonai had commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide he burned in a fire outside the camp. Aaron slaughtered the burnt offering. Then his sons presented the blood to him, and he splashed it around on the altar. They handed the burnt offering to him piece by piece, along with the head, and he burned them up as smoke on the altar. He washed the innards and the legs, and he offered them in smoke upon the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's gift, took the goat of the sin offering, which was for, for the people, slaughtered it, and offered it for sin, just like the first one. He presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the decree. Then Aaron presented the grain offering, filling his hand with some of it and burning it up as smoke on the altar, alongside the burnt offering of the morning. He also slaughtered the bull and the ram as a sacrifice of fellowship offerings for the people. Then his sons brought him the blood, which he splashed around on the altar, as well as the fat from the bull and the ram, the fat tail and the layer over the innards, along with the kidneys and the covering of the liver. They put the fat upon the breast, then he burned it on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh, Aaron waved for a wave offering before Adonai, as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. Then he stepped down from presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offerings. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came back out and blessed the people, the glory of Adonai appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of Adonai and devoured the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Amen. Amen. Fell on their faces. Amen. Amen. Okay. He is the reward for those who diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. So when the, when the people of the Israelites saw all this happening, they fell on their faces. Do you think you would probably in the presence of the Lord do the same? Yeah. yeah. If you walked in, yeah. okay, you would know. Yeah. And ultimately you would be overwhelmed and you would also fall on your face. I know I would. Okay, that's why in all these moments of scripture, when he's explaining, when Yeshua is telling to the people, like the woman at the well, he's telling her, mm. I am the Messiah. Mm. Okay, or oh, I love that again, you've heard me say it over and over again in that scene in the chosen where uh the the uh, the, the priest is saying to Yeshua, you know, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, we're gonna have to impose the law of Moses. I am the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just want to be there. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's just amazing. And it's done so well. Yes. Anyway, um, okay, we're in chapter 10. Yes. Note, Adonai will manifest himself in the solemn assemblies of his people, uh, his, his uh, ministers, to benefit from this comfort uh, that you that you have, you have to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's read about what we were talking about earlier. This is chapter ten. Okay. Holy fire consumes unauthorized mm -hmm. fire. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Chapter ten, please. Now Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, each took his own censer, put fire in it, laid incense over it, and offered unauthorized fire before Adonai. Key word he... being unauthorized. unauthorized. Okay. 
which he had not commanded them. Had not commanded them. Jump with me to Numbers. The book of Numbers, verse chapter 3, verse 4. Numbers, 3, verses 4. Who's got it? But Nadab and Abihu died before Adonai for offering unauthorized fire before Adonai in the Sinai wilderness. They had no children, so Eliezer and Ithamar served as Kohanim under Aaron, their father. Okay, all right. Again, further evidence. Okay. All right. Um, consume them? Is that what we were? No, we should not command them. So, so fire. Oh, so fire. Yep. Okay. So fire came out from the presence of Adonai and consumed them. So they died before Adonai. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what Adonai spoke of saying. To those who are near me, I will show myself holy. Upon the faces of all the people, I will be glorified. Then Aaron kept silent. Aaron kept silent. Mm -hmm. Okay. If one is duly consecrated by God, God will manifest himself in him. Amen? Amen. Okay. Duly consecrated. He will show himself. Go on. <laughs> then Moses called Michel, Mich Michel, Michel yes. and Elzaphan, El 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 the sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, 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 yeah. and said to them, come near, carry your relatives away from the front of the sanctuary to outside of the camp. So they drew near and carried them, still in their tunics, outside of the camp, as Moses had said. Mm. Then Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and Amar, his sons, do not uncover your heads <laughs> or tear your clothes so you may not die and he will not be angry with the entire congregation. But let your kinsmen, the whole house of Israel, mourn over the burning that Adonai has kindled. You must not go out from the entrance of the tent of meeting or you will die for the anointing oil of Adonai is on you. So they acted according to the word of Moses. Wow. I did too. <laughs> Thoughts. Um, Again, what we said at the beginning, put yourself back to then. We're, we're surrounded by here 5783. It's okay. so interesting that most of the time, if they went into God's presence and they weren't the way they died here, they're already consecrated. If they went out into the people, they will die because they're set apart and they have a job to do. Really interesting. They called upon Mishael and Elzaphan, who were cousins, so as not to harm the brothers, <clears throat> okay, who were a, a priestly line there. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Any other thoughts on that, Sonny? Yeah, it's very deep when God doesn't want them to mourn over what happened, over the people that died. But it was such a big thing to God that this disobedience that God wanted the people to understand that they needed to mourn only over the burning that caused the burning that caused God to do what he had to do. Mourn over the burning that Adonai has kindled, not to mourn over the men, but to mourn over the sin. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's true. And even though Aaron and his family could not mourn, the children of Israel were allowed to mourn. Other thoughts? Um, one thing that reminds me of the children of Israel. One second, yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Evangelist. This, this reminds me, I don't know if there's a connection, but it just made a connection in my brain. Reminds me of. It reminds me of Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Rachel. Yeah, it reminds me, just this part where it says they came and they were told to come, take them away. Yes. It reminds me of Acts 5 with Ananias and Sapphira. Uh-huh. And of course, it's it's a learning, it's a, it's a moment of learning and teaching for God's people to realize how severe and how serious some of these attitudes are that we have. Precisely. Yeah. Okay. In other words, if I hadn't made it clear to you now 
I am deadly serious about what I am commanding you to do. Okay, and even though there was no, I mean, these were the sons of Aaron, his high priest, Kohan Hagadol. Okay, as I used to say in my English class, it don't matter. <laughs> okay, there is no special dispensation for them. To the contrary, it's like if you're a policeman, then you need to live up to a certain order of expectation of your behavior, right? Right. Or and that's true with a lot of things. Okay. Um, Rabbi. So again, you know, I have to make it clear. Here it is. Yes, Evangeline. Oh, it's Libby. Oh, Libby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, and the, a third, uh, Angela had made me remember a third situation was when Aiken was holding the tavern, the the Ark of the Covenant, and he didn't he didn't carry it properly according to what Moses had explained, and so he died on the spot. Right, when, he, re he reached out and touched the tabernacle. The fact of the matter is. They had it on a cart, mm -hmm. okay, and it was supposed to be carried on on uh, poles, on right? Poles, right? So it was it was on a cart, and it slipped, and he reached out and grabbed it to prevent it from falling over. And he, an important okay. point to that is that it the cart the uh, ark came safely out of Philistine on a cart because God miraculously allowed that to happen. They sent it away because it was causing trouble in Palestine and so the people followed what they saw the Palestinians did the Philistines I'll say yes they derived it um they they followed the world rather than looking asking God what they needed to do precisely well that therein lies the key point asking God which is where Moses had his strength Okay, he was not afraid to say, I'm not sure about this. Let me go ask him. Mm -hmm. All right, question. Somebody had a question. No. Okay, let's pick it up, please. Okay, eight. And then I spoke to Aaron saying, Do not drink wine or fermented drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tent of meeting, so that you do not die. This is to be a statute forever throughout your generation. You are to make a distinction between the holy and the common and between the unclean and the clean. And you are to teach B'nai Yisrael all the statutes which Adonai has spoken to them through Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eliezer and Itamar, his surviving sons. Take the grain offering left over from Adonai's offerings by fire and eat it without hummus with beside the altar, for it is most no, holy. No, what? Hummus. 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 Right, not to be confused with hummus, oh, okay. which is chickpeas. Hummus. Hummus is bread or, or leaven, or containing leaven, okay, which we just came off of seven days of not eating, right? Oh, hummus. So, um, yeah, not hummus. Okay. That's a different thing. <laughs> hummus. <laughs> okay, that's what you take your pita bread and dip it in. Okay. I was testing you. Very good. Keep this in mind. Again, um, I can't help but go back to that moment where Bichu uh, and Nadab were killed. But what about all those who witnessed this? Okay, they shrank with horror, and there was great confusion. But Moses was composed. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you understand, again, we're going back to the comments from the very beginning before we started. Put yourself back in that time. Okay, here we sit in the Western world, 2023, okay? And we're used to ways of life and all the modern conveniences. Okay, but put yourself you know, like the author of that book, he was in. She was in Israel, and she was on the road on the Emmaus road, mm -hmm. realizing this is where he walked. Mm -hmm. 
there are lots of places where you can go in Israel to know that his presence was there. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, it's overwhelming. Praise God. It is completely yeah. overwhelming. At least us, it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Even putting your hands on a wall, it's like uh, you can feel the ruach just pouring out. So, again, I encourage you, but get on with your ministry and do so cheerfully, mm -hmm. which is what he's trying to tell. Okay, we cannot, you have to understand the Lord enacted, he, is, he has made it very clear, you must obey, mm -hmm. okay, it's not your own interpretation, mm -hmm. okay, do what I ask you to do, go on please. 13. You are to eat it in a holy place because it is your portion and your son's portion of the offerings of Adonai made by fire. For so I have been commanded. You are to eat the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented in a clean place. You, your sons and your daughters with you, for they are given as your portion and your children's portion out of the sacrifices of the fellowship offerings of B'nai Israel. They are to bring the thigh that is presented and the breast that is waved with fat portions scorched by fire to wave it as a wave offering before Adonai. So it will be yours and your sons with you, a share forever, as Adonai has commanded. When we see this business about the thigh, remind you of anything? <laughs> oh, I mean, yes. Something with Jacob? Yeah, wrestling. Let's, wrestling with the, yeah, and the dislocated head. Stephen. Wrestling with Jacob, you know, that's where um where Jacob grabbed to make the... okay. Well, again, this was when when frequently a covenant was made, or uh, like instead of shaking hands on a deal, yeah, you put your hand under, under the thigh. That was yeah. Abraham asking Eliezer yeah. to go and find a wife for Isaac. Exactly. Okay. It was binding, all right? And it was personal, sunny. Also, wasn't Jacob touched in the thigh by God when he fought with the angel? And as a result of that wrestling with God, mm -hmm. okay, and, and I, again, draw your attention to the word Israel. What does it mean? Wrestle with God. Wrestle with God. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay yes. So... Um, but as a result of that wrestling with God, how did that render Jacob? Mm -hmm. He had an infirmity in his by the tendon. His hip. Okay. Yeah. So as a result, there is something that is rendered not kosher to eat. Right. What? The tendon. Layman, y'all. So layman, y'all. What did you say? Layman, y'all. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to break it to you, Amy. <laughs> but that's correct. But Jewish ingenuity. <laughs> they developed the workaround. They did. <laughs> they cut it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, but typically if it's not, it is that hip that is considered not kosher. So so the so the filling is part of the hip? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's why it's such a small no I'm not brain back. life will never be the same. Uh, of course, Rabbi, does, does that apply to the thigh of everything else? Can I eat a chicken thigh? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, Rebecca. I was thinking about um, what we're reading, and as we're reading it, is I think one of the reasons why he didn't want them to go and step out. And mourn too is because they were still sacrificing unto God and they were still doing what he wanted to do. And that would have took away from, from what he was, they were doing, the sacrifices, and it would have put the focus on their on their passing rather than why that happened and that they needed to honor God and respect him, you know, it's and continue yes. what, what they were doing. Perspective. They didn't, didn't want it in any way, shape, or form. To be a distraction, right? And needless to say, that would have been a distraction. Okay. Yeah, because right. then they would have been like, "Oh, my son," and this and that, and exactly. instead of why that happened. Yep. Okay, let's pick it up. Where are we? Sixteen. 16? Yeah. 
Then Moses searched carefully. I wrote the... here at 16, middle of Torah. Hmm. I think that's exactly where we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are smack in the middle of Torah. Yeah. Okay, let's read on. Okay. Then Moses searched carefully for the goat of the sin offering and noticed it had been burned up. So he snapped at Eleazar and Edomar, the surviving sons of Aaron, saying, why have you not eaten a sin offering in the place of the sanctuary, since it is most holy? And he gave it to you in order to bear the iniquity of the congregation. In order to what? To bear mm -hmm. the iniquity. Does that sound familiar? Mm How -hmm. oh, so? Yeah. 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 What he did. Jesus. Yeshua. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Boy, the iniquity of us all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. Go on. Of the congregation to make atonement for them before Adonai. Look, its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You certainly should have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. Mm -hmm. But Aaron said to Moses, Behold, today they presented their sin offering and their burnt offering before Adonai. When things like these have happened to me, would it have been good in the eyes of Adonai if I had eaten a sin offering today? When Moses heard this, it was good in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was okay for them to fast, but not to go outside of the tabernacle. Correct. Okay, this is important stuff here. Okay, uh, and when you're concerned about what to put in your mouth and what not to put in your mouth. And again, keep in mind, God did never change his mind here. Because people, when I talk about what is kosher and what is not kosher, Okay, um, and uh, people say, well, what about Peter's dream in Acts, right? What about it? Talked about people. He okay. interpreted the dream. Mm -hmm. It was about people. What was the dream? It Linda. was unclean things coming down, and he, Peter was- he saw a sheet coming down. Yeah. Right, with all the animals in it. Mm -hmm. Right. And he said, if I made it, you can eat it. No. That's no. what he said. But what he said was it had nothing to do with animals, mm -hmm. as you said. It had everything to do with people and what happened after that. Mm -hmm. He was taken to the house of Cornelius, yeah. a Gentile, a Gentile, yeah, mm -hmm. and baptized him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Didn't he say mm -hmm. what I have called clean do not call unclean? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so he didn't say you can eat it. Oh, no, no, no. You, okay. you can see it if you look at scripture. That's what he said. Yeah. Oh, no. well, then uh, they 99% they, sure. But they took Peter when, when word got out that he went into the Gentiles' home. They, they brought that up when he went, when he met with James. Right. And he said, hey, you know, this is what God showed me. And, and this is what I did. Right. But again, people will throw that at you as if to say, oh, yeah, he changed his mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can eat. If, if God made it, you can eat it. And again, the dream had nothing to do with animals. Mm -hmm. It had everything to do with people. Mm -hmm. Pat, Pat Robertson just said two days ago, you can eat it, you know, you, you don't have to, you know, not eat certain things like bacon and stuff like that, you know. He said it was okay. He, he was saying, yeah, totally okay. To eat it. Mm -hmm. Who do you believe? Mm -hmm. Pat or God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> with God. Yeah. With God on this one. Okay. Again, let's read on and see why we're not supposed to eat those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I love Pat dearly, been in his presence. Okay. Uh -huh. But at the same time, okay, he's not right. Mm -hmm. Go on. This Chapter is 11. 11 Tashrut for holiness. Go on. Right, one. Adonai spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to Bnei Yisrael, saying, These are the living things which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Whatever has split, divided hoof, and chews cud among the animals, that you may eat. Nevertheless, you should not eat of those that are only chew cud or have a split hoof. The camel, though it uh, chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof, is unclean to you. The camel? Coney. Coney. Though it chews the cud, yet does not have a divided hoof, so it is, it is unclean to you. The hair, there, though it chews the cud, does not split the hoof, so it is unclean to you. The pig, though it has a split, 
divided hoof does not chew cud, so it is unclean to you. You are not to eat the meat from them, nor are you to touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. Any question about that? What's nope. a coney? It's a uh, bird, I believe. Mm. I'm not sure. It's an island in uh, New York. <laughs> <laughs> right near near Brooklyn, Coney Island. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Coney hot dogs. Coney Island, yeah. Kosher hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they island. island. Yeah, they have wow. Okay, go on, please. Nine. Mm -hmm. From all that are in the waters, you may eat whatever has fins and scales within the waters, in the seas and the river, in the rivers. Those you may eat. But any that do not have fins and scales in the seas or the rivers, among those that swarm on the waters, or among any of the living creatures that are in the waters, they are loathsome. So give me an example of that. Oh, okay. shellfish, clams. Shellfish, clams, lobster. Crab. Uh, Mussels. Uh, Mussels. <laughs> Octo octopus, squid. <laughs> Shellfish yeah. are scavengers, mm -hmm. a lot of so they have a, a lot of uh, garbage in their body, <laughs> and they have parasites too. And they have parasites. Yeah. Thank you. Did you say so, shrimp? Did I say shrimp? But you know, I, I was I really sorry to give up shrimp. Yep, me, you and me both. <laughs> what? What? My mother made a lot of great shrimp. <laughs> But the Lord said, uh, yeah. okay, go on. 11. They are to be detestable to you. You should not eat meat from them, and you should detest their carcasses. Whatever has neither fins nor scales in the waters, that is a detest detestable thing to you. Among the birds, you should detest the following. They are not to be eaten. They are loathsome. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are detestable to you. Yet you may eat from all winged creeping things that go on all fours, which have legs above their feet, with which to hop on the earth. You may eat from any kind of locust, any kind of katydid, any kind of cricket, and any kind of grasshopper. But all winged creeping things that have four feet are loathsome to you. So who is an example of uh, who ate a uh, locust? Oh, John the Baptist. Yochanan, mm -hmm. the Presbyterian. Oh, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't eat anything like that. Okay. <laughs> really, have you tried it? First half, no. <laughs> no, that's because of him I couldn't drink. Which one they were told me no more, no more alcohol. No more. Uh, yeah, no like more okay. Booze. Okay, 24. Moreover, by these also you will become unclean. Whoever touches their carcasses should be unclean until the evening. Whoever carries any part of their carcasses to wash his clothes and will be unclean until the evening. Every animal with a separating hoof, but not split or does not chew cud, is unclean to you. Everyone who touches them will become unclean. So whatever moves on its paws among all animals that go on all fours is unclean to you. Name something that goes on its paws. Dogs. A dog. Go on. <laughs> Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean until the evening. Whoever carries their carcasses is to wash, to wash his clothes and will be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. Among the creeping things that creep on the earth, the following are unclean to you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko. The monitor lizard, the wall of the lizard, the, sh the sh skink, the skink, and the chameleon. Among mm -hmm. all that creep, these are all that creep. These are the ones that are unclean to you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean until the evening. Whatever falls on them when they are dead will become unclean. Whether it is any vessel of wood or clothing or skin or sackcloth, whatever vessel it is with which any work is done, it must be put into water and it will be unclean until the evening, then it will be clean. Mm. Now, if any of them falls into a clay pot, everything that is in it will become unclean and you are to break it. Any food that may be eaten but has water on it from such a pot will become unclean. Also, any drink that, that may be drunk in any such pot will become unclean. Everything on which part of their carcass falls will, will become unclean. An oven or stove, for pots is to be broken into pieces. They are unclean and will be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern, cistern for collecting waters will be clean, though anyone who touches their carcass will become unclean. 
If part of a carcass falls on any seed for sowing that has yet to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and part of a car carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. If any animal that you may eat dies, the one who touches its carcass will become unclean until the evening. He who eats of its carcass is to wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Also, the one who carries his carcass is to wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every creeping thing that crawls on the earth is detestable. It should not be eaten. Whatever moves on its belly or crawls on all fours or has many feet among all the creeping things that crawl on the earth, these you are not to eat, for they are detestable. You are not to contaminate yourselves with any creeping things that crawls, nor, nor make yourselves unclean with them or defiled by them. For I am Adonai, your God. Therefore, sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. You are not to defile yourself with any kind of creeping thing that moves on the earth. For I am Adonai who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, you should be holy, for I am holy. Rather this, critical paragraph yeah, there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is not just a suggestion. All right. I, and when he passes these things on to us, he's doing so for who's good? All right. All right. Read 46, please. This is the Torah of the animal, the bird, every living creature that moves in the waters, and every creature that creeps on the earth to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean, and between the living thing that may be eaten and the living thing that may not be eaten. So, Again, let me make it clear. We are to understand and read the word of God from the perspective of understanding the spirit of what is being given to us. Okay. If you have lobster for dinner, bam, you're out of here, right? Well, no. that's between you and him. Amen. But totally, are you going to lose your salvation? No, no. I mean, it's not a no. salvation. Issue. Okay, it's not a salvation. Issue. That's what I heard. And say that again. Isn't so? Do you? When he, when he says to me, "Don't eat these things." Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, I grew up eating all of these things. Not all. Mm -hmm. I never had camel. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, my mother cooked in every language. We had phenomenal ribs. Okay. Um, but again, later on, at the same time, when he told me I needed to wear this thing on my head all the time, okay, he said, You are not to eat these things. Mm -hmm. Did I test him on this? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happened what as a result of that? I got sick. Mm -hmm. I got sick. Okay, what happened as a result of that is he beat me up on it. Okay, he made me have a terrible guilty conscience about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, obedience. Mm -hmm. obedience. Yeah, John had an experience. John John went to an event and the guy said, oh, the ribs are really good. John took a taste and they were bitter. Yeah, that so was, that, that was, that was um, right before I started going out with her and the Lord told me I needed to start eating kosher mm -hmm. and and so we had a little get together after this golf tournament and and the guy made made this pork and I was like I wanted you know he, he sacrificed so I took one and I bit it and and I'm hearing all these guys talk about how good it was and yet when I put it in my mouth it was so bitter. Now I had to figure out Question how am is, I going to throw this? Yes, away. Is, when you go out, okay, do you wear that keep on your head? No. It's kind of hard when you're spraying lawns. Okay. <laughs> <Diane>. So <laughs> the New Testament doesn't supersede the kosher laws? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. well, See, that's what you're saying is that the Torah is null and void. The New Testament doesn't doesn't contradict what you just read in any way, shape, or form. Wow! Yeah, he can. The only thing so, that changed was again, the animal sacrifices. I know people who are. Talking, yeah, I know people who are major believers. Okay, and who I've sat down with, and and they order. Shrimp and ribs and all this other Bacon, stuff. Bacon, yeah. Okay, and and again, uh, even people who are in ministry, 
Okay, again, that's between them and him. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, that, that, that's clear. Um, well, no, I'm so sorry. Oh, I had a random thought. You were talking about putting our minds in, you know, the that time place. when it was written. Yes. Let's go to the time when Yeshua was born. Um, for Joseph and Mary to to have Brit Milah, the circumcision of Yeshua, as required on the eighth day in the temple, they would not have been allowed to touch a donkey, you know, to help her walk from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. They would have had to walk. Oh my goodness, because they couldn't touch a donkey or a camel if she were to ride something. Wow. That's that's only impressive. It's yeah, only yeah, that, uh, they couldn't touch it if it was a carcass. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure they, they, they couldn't touch it. They, they certainly weren't going to eat it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay, then it could have Yeah. Otherwise, when when Yeshua said uh, before his entry, triumphal entry into Jerusalem, That's a good point. right? He yeah. said to his disciples, "Go down there. There's a man with a donkey. Tell him yeah. that so and so wants." That wants the donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Thank you. So, yeah. so um, they went down to the guy, <coughs> and the guy just said, oh, "Okay." There <laughs> <laughs> was a no question I asked. Yeah. What? Someone was talking to him before. You right. think? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's no suggestion of that. But there is a yes. suggestion of that. Yes. Okay. Um, the master has need. Yeah. The, there it is. So uh, again, it's a it's a touchy point, but it, that that whole thing about the the sheet is a misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. okay? and people will use that as an excuse to say I can eat whatever I want to eat. Well, you can, but that's between you and him. Okay. Uh, you know, again, um, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Right. Okay, if you decide that you're going to follow what he says to do, okay, if he has spoken to you in that regard, I would obey. And would because hear. God said it, Rabbi. all the other things that somebody mentioned are scavengers, so it's it's protecting right. us from all that. And then the other excuse, though, is to that, Linda, is, oh, well, we have now oyster farms, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The things that, you know, they're not unclean like they used to be unclean. Mm -hmm. Well, you can say that about the pig as well. Uh, okay, Evangeline. Yeah, I was going to say um, a lot of these, the kosher laws, we can explain them now, you know. We, we have science about this and that, and we can explain them. But it's not, we cannot discard those that we can't explain because some of them. Um, you don't know the reason why the Lord said to do it or not to eat it, but you just you just follow because that's what he said. And one of these, I'm wondering, why does it say um, you're unclean until evening? Suppose whatever happened happened one hour before the evening. How does that? Because it's going to pass through your system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it doesn't matter how close to the evening. So there was after a period of time. I mean, it doesn't warrant, warrant you being put to death. Okay, okay. But, but after a period of time, you will recover. Right. I was okay. wondering if the it's, other if thing it's... is too is to keep in mind that there are a lot of people who keep quote unquote kosher, but the kosher that they keep is largely rabbinical, not what we read. Okay, somebody stopped me in a restaurant and said, "Why are you eating here? You can't eat here. This is not a kosher restaurant." Literally came over to the table and said, "You can't do this." Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. and I explained, I'm not eating anything here that the Lord said I can't eat. Okay, again, Abraham was visited by the Lord on his way to Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. right, with his two bodyguards, two angels. Okay, what did Abraham feed him? He fed him oxen and curds, right. meat and dairy. Right. So today's Orthodox Jew would say, no cheaper for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Again, that's rabbinical. That has nothing to do with anything that's in scripture. And a lot of this whole business about what you're cooking with and this and that and the other thing are rabbinical things that carry it to an extreme that is not in the word of God. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Rabbi, I, st I still don't understand though. If I touch something unclean one hour before the evening, um, how come all, all of a sudden at evening time, it's, you know, it's no longer unclean? Oh. That's you what I don't what? understand. Evangeline? Yeah. I got a long list of stuff I got to ask him when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> <Me too>. Okay. <laughs> Yes. You're right. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's a new day, Evangel. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that may be it. When once the evening comes, you're into a new day. That's uh, correct. Okay. Right. Because days are sundown to sundown. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Not sun up to sundown. Praise God. Okay. Yeah. Father God, I just praise you and I thank, thank you, you for this Lord. time together. Lord, I just lift you up. You are constantly revealing things to us. Yes. However it is, Lord, we just internalize all of these things. And again, imagine ourselves listening and listening and studying at the word and the fear of Rabbi Jesus. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Yeshua, the Messiah. We thank just you, praise you. We thank you. Uh, we just ask that you pour into us. And again, use us, Lord. We are your disciples. Okay, we're not to take everything that we know and hide it under a pillow. Oh, Lord, we're supposed to use it and share it with other people so that they will come to know what we know and come into a relationship with you. That's what it's all about. So we praise you and thank you for this time. We ask for your blessings on the service, on Rabbi as he brings the message Lord, today. Lord, on everybody's health. Amen. Lord, we praise you for the continued testimony, Lord, and the uh, continued recovery. Julia, Lord, uh, we just lift you up. What an extraordinary story uh, for Rabbi uh, David, uh, his physical challenges, Lord, and uh, uh, our friend Ed Pena, Lord, who continues to recover, um, and a, a myriad of other things that we have brought to prayer. And Lord, again, we ask people to join us on Thursday night as we Amen. continue to pray. Praise and join God. us tomorrow morning, Lord, at eight, eight, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, where we take the word of God and expand it into the Brit Hadashah. We thank praise you. you. We thank you. We give you thanks. In the mm -hmm. precious name of Yeshua HaMoshiach Tzikana, Yeshua our Messiah, and our righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. the house of the